Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name's Josh. Today we're talking about Jojo Siwa and the Zomji or XOMG group. Rolling Stone released an article about what's going on in the group and it's giving Tiffany Raquel Smith. Jojo Siwa is a child who was exploited herself and now had the opportunity to not pass that disgusting, toxic garbage onto the world, and yet she did, and she did it in a bad way, and she's taking advantage of kids, and these, it's getting crazy. So it's not gonna be a super long video today just because I don't know a ton about this, but we're gonna talk about it because, it, again, because it is actually just like Tiffany Raquel Smith and the Piper Raquel Squad. And these people that will stop at anything to make their kids famous to pay their bills. Let's talk. So if you don't know who Jojo Siwa is, she was in the most disgusting show that ever existed, which was Dance Moms, where they took a bunch of kids and they treated them like adults and made them work harder than most adults will ever work. And these stage moms forced their kids to be in the show because it was their, their track to stardom. Okay, Jojo Siwa was a girl who, who was on that show and her mom was a fiercely disgusting piece of garbage along with Abby Lee Miller and they fought a lot. And I think she's probably the most famous kid that came from the show. And then uh, she came, she went on to do her own thing. She was on a lot of uh, influencer shows like Colleen Ballinger, Miranda Sings. She was friends with a lot of people. Uh, the LeBrants, which I don't think she is anymore because the LeBrants are Christian and she came out as gay. And you obviously know the LeBrants are probably completely against that. And so she, she started this group called XOMG because it's, a huge moneymaker to make content starring children. Piper Raquel is one of those stories just like this, where they started this squad, her mom Tiffany did, and runs this thing, and kids come in and out and are treated like adults and not like adults and are, you know, SA and everything else and are just... These kids are all exploited. And you know, a lot of people are going to be taking the parent side in this and Jojo Siwa's side on this. And I need to all to know that all these kids are always victims. Okay, and these parents that put their kids into these types of things ought to be ashamed of themselves. Okay, it's the most disgusting thing ever because these kids make tons of money and these parents take them out of school. They don't give them proper educations. They don't care about their educations. All they care about is stardom. And none of these kids come out on the other side normal. Very, very rarely do they ever come out normal or without trauma. Okay, and I mean... Even the ones that came out normal who don't live crazy lives, Jim McCurdy, Allison Stoner, uh, a bunch of those, they still have massive amounts of trauma based on what they had to go through. Okay, so regardless of whether or not they came out normal or not or went off the deep end, they still get trauma. Why don't you want to put your kids through that? Okay, so we're going to read this article. It's a very long article, but we're going to like skip over it and we're going to go to the Reddit forum who, who posts a couple videos about this thing. Um, and there's a timeline about all of XOMG. Now, all you need to know is that Jojo Siwa is using her power and her fame to do what happened to her, which is basically find a lot of talented kids and exploit them for cash. That's really all it's about. And you know, those kids aren't getting compensated as much as Jojo Siwa and her mother are like to like, they're probably getting a tiny percentage because a lot of these parents will stop at anything and they'll give their kids, even giving their, even signing their kids up to really, really garbage deals so that the kids can become famous, maybe independently make it famous later. So Jojo Siwa and her mom and all these people who run behind the scenes on this, they have all the power. They're like, you want to be in this group? Here's the agreement. Tiffany Raquel, Tiffany Smith of the Piper Raquel did the same thing. She'd start one thing, say, hey, we're hiring for this job. It's this much money. And then when they got in, they're like, oh, we're going to give you a different role. Do you still want it? It's like a hundred bucks. And then they suck them into this thing. And then they even take a percentage of their own personal social medias. She, she made millions and millions and millions and continues to today make millions of dollars off these children. Okay. And these parents are responsible for signing these contracts and they sign garbage contracts because they have no leverage. Okay. And then when they finally get in and they think they have leverage, all they do is get kicked out. It's crazy. And these kids suffer for it. So shame on these damn parents. Like right before I read this article, shame on Jojo Siwa, shame on Jojo Siwa's mom, shame on the industry and shame on the damn parents. Okay. All of these people are wrong. The kids are the victims at all levels. So let's read this. Jojo Siwa promised them pop stardom. They say they were thrown in the trash. I mean, this is the industry. Why do you want your kid in an industry where they can literally just be tossed in the trash? Why would you subject your child to that? Unbelievable. 
Leah Sanderson always wanted to dance, but it was never going to be easy for her. Sanderson, 16, was born with spina bifida, a congenital birth defect in which the spinal cord fails to properly form. She spent her early years in and out of the hospital, undergoing dozens of surgeries. She still regularly struggles with pain and bladder infections, and since she was five, has used a catheter to go to the bathroom. The school nurse was my best friend growing up, she says. Around 2013, when Sanderson was six or seven, she started taking classes at the dance studio Beyond Belief, owned by Justin Johnson, perhaps best known as drag queen Alyssa Edwards on RuPaul's Drag Race. Sanderson became a star, dominating the competitive dance circuit despite her medical condition, appearing on Johnson's Netflix show Dancing Queen and competing with in with Beyond Belief in a 2021 episode of America's Got Talent. Like, whatever you think of, like, kids around drag queens and all that kind of stuff, it's still a form of entertainment. The thing I care about the most is that these people just exploit children on their shows. This should never, ever have been a thing. It should be outlawed. In 2021, when Sanderson was 14, Johnson took her aside and told her that he had to submit her to an audition for the upcoming reality TV competition, Siwa's Dance Pop Revolution, hosted by the powerhouse pop star, Gen Z icon, Jojo Siwa. Is she a singer? As the culmination of the reality show, C when her mother, Jesslyn, were putting together as a, as a pop group. The band XOMG Pop would be positioned as the next big girl group bound for the charts. A viable competitor to bands like Kids Bop, Sanderson was thrilled. She was a huge fan of JoJo, having watched her breakthrough turn on TV franchise Abby's Ultimate Dance Competition and then Dance Moms, where JoJo quickly became a fan favorite. JoJo parlayed her fame from the show into a career as an actor, influencer, and pop star, signing with Nickelodeon and embarking on a global tour and rolling out her own merchandise, including JoJo branded books, dolls, accessories, and hair bows. So stupid. Her candy-colored aesthetic, combined with her cheery, frenetic persona, earned her a devoted following among young girls. And that's true. That's true. And they referred to themselves as the Sewinators? All right. In 2021, Siwa came out as, qu as queer. The now 20-year-old has since become a prominent Gen Z LGBTQ activist and social media influencer. More than 45.45 million followers on TikTok and social media. She's followed by a lot of children, like mainly children. Okay. On social media, she appears to be entering a more mature phase of her career, garnering tabloid attention for her relationships with influencers ex Avery Cyrus and Kylie Prue and debuting more monochromatic punk influence aesthetic. Who cares? This is so stupid. JoJo's mother, Jessalyn, a former dance studio owner from Omaha, Nebraska, has played an integral part in crafting her lore. On Dance Moms, Jessalyn leaned into the role of cutthroat stage mother, bleaching her daughter's hair, crafting her trademark handmade bows, and often getting into intense confrontations with dance instructor Abby Lee Miller. After JoJo signed with Nickelodeon in 2017, Jessalyn continued to work closely to help her fulfill her dream of becoming... Uh, of becoming as Jessalyn told Rolling Stone the next Hannah Montana great because she's so normal Sanderson to an extent shared that dream she was a longtime fan of Jojo's having watched her on Dance Moms she was see this is the people that you stand if you're a fan of these people you're gross she was definitely someone I looked up to for what reason she was a child exploiter unreal and this is again these are full these people who put their kids in there all child exploiters there's you're not like a stage mom you're not a dance mom you're a child exploiter that's what you get because she had previously appeared on Dancing Queen, she was somewhat familiar with the rigors of reality television. Shooting it had been a positive experience. Leah believed that if she won a spot in Siwa's pop group, it could help her achieve dreams of global superstardom. Like, okay, let's be real. These kids are pretty, like, especially on social media, they're stars. But they're not global superstars, okay? They're losers. A lot of them are just big losers. Whose parents are living vicariously through their children. Sanderson's mother, Angie, had some reservations because Leah was a minor. Angie would have to leave her other three older kids behind in Texas to accompany Leah to Los Angeles. She'd also have to shut down the daycare center she owned, but she and her husband, Cody, talked it over and decided it was too good an opportunity to pass up, a.k.a. she might make more money. So let me leave my other children behind to go make money with this child. So not only is she leaving her kids, but she's separating this daughter from her brothers and sisters in search of superstardom. Like, I don't care who you... That's disgusting. You are gar garbage and gross for doing that. It was too good an opportunity to pass up. You're such a loser. A person with spina bifida shouldn't be able to do the things she's doing, Cody says. We never know from day to day if this may be your last time step on stage, so we have to take every opportunity. So they're saying that she still could possibly just... This could ruin her, but they're pushing her into it? That seems super dangerous and unsafe. In the early spring of 2020, Angie and Leah flew to L.A. to appear in the series. The two years that followed, according to Sanderson's, were the exact opposite of what Leah had dreamed about as a little girl. Really? Look at them. Look at look at this. You know, because children aren't meant to do this. You understand this? Like, I don't give a crap that it exists. And some people are like, well, it exists, a reality. I don't care. This is not what children were meant to be doing. 
The children are meant to work full-time stage careers, being famous, pushed in front of the cameras at all times, not having educations, not having normal childhoods, missing out on core memories and core moments of upbringing and developmental stages. They're missing it all. They're, they're, they're always around adults who are taking advantage of them. They're probably around a lot of predators who are taking advantage of them. Okay, they are only they only exist to make people money. That's their whole existence from childhood. If you want to put your kid into that, you're disgusting. You're gross, man. And there's no other word for it. You are a piece of trash and you're a bad parent. The Sandersons, as well as multiple sources close to production, allege that C was subjected the children to grueling rehearsals, sometimes foregoing school breaks with meager compensation. They also allege Sanderson was forced to work under intense physical duress with Jessalyn encouraging her to attend a video shoot just weeks after she underwent spinal cord surgery. So this kid's working full time the same time going through spinal cord surgeries for her spina bifida. Like, uh, is the doctor like, yeah, this is cool. Let her work full time dancing and singing while we're getting her in for surgery. This is good. Uh, probably the doctor said no. In one instance, just days before the surgery, they allege Leah started bleeding through her belly button during a rehearsal for a performance at the Children's and Families Emily, Emmys, which was hosted by JoJo. Rather than encourage her to take a break, the Sanders and say Jesslyn told her to put a maxi pad on it so it wouldn't leak through her costume. Bleeding through your belly button? It's over. If my child is bleeding through her belly and is going to come up with surgery soon, you're not in this industry. You know what? We're going to go back home. We're living a good life. we got a daycare. We're making decent money. You don't need to be in this. You're, you're forcing your child to be in something that is actively hurting her. For what? A paycheck and fame? And did it turn out? No. And it never does. I know that Tiffany Raquel makes, Tiffany Smith Raquel makes a ton of money. I know that, I know that Piper Raquel makes a ton of money. These people are rich. And the fame that they have is just fleeting. Because in the real world, no one knows who you are. I mean, a bunch of little kids on YouTube know you're, but you're not really famous, okay? You're not. You're not scooped up by industries because you're not good enough, you're not talented enough, and none of these kids really are. They're just like, they're like, it's like the second string or third string farm team to the actually talented kids who are on Disney and Nickelodeon. They're not good enough, but they just go out and do their own thing. Because child exploitation is very lucrative, and the algorithm loves it. So that's disgusting, and if you go to the, the group, Someone had posted this video of what it looks like at one of these places after this article was released. Watch this video. To me, it looks like kids play. You don't look like pop stars to me. I cannot have... Hear what she just said there. To me, it looks like kids playing. Well, let me tell you this, whoever's speaking there, I think it might be Jojo Siwa's mom. Go F yourself. They are children. So hear this. Th just that instance right there it makes me so angry because this is what's fed into these kids' brains. 24 hours a day by adults around them who are taking advantage of them. It looked to me, it looks like there's kids here and not pop stars. Are you telling like, so they're taking the fun out of it. First of all, right away. You're not allowed to be children. You're not allowed to have fun. It's all about being serious and working hard because that's all that matters to these people because you're wasting the adults time. Okay. Stop allowing your children to be around adults like all the time and not allowed to be kids. That's the most disgusting thing I've ever heard. I have the press to see this. I don't care that you just learned Here, it. Listen, listen. Kids play. You don't look like pop stars to me. I cannot have the press see this. I cannot have the press see this. Like, uh, outlaw this shit on TV, okay? I don't care that you just learned it, and I don't care that you're tired. And why are these dance moms, and whoever this is, always this way? Do you know what I'm, do you know what I'm saying? They're all just shapes. They can't do what these kids are doing. Okay, she sits her, her sits her ass on a chair all day, probably eating candy and drinking Diet Coke, right? While these kids actually burn thousands of calories, working 24 hours a day to achieve a dance move, while Jojo Siwa there collects all the money for it. Why are these moms always this way? Why are like pageant moms always the most disgusting, ugly pieces of garbage that exist? Because they're living vicariously through their kids because they can't achieve it. That always got me when I see these things. Their moms are always the same. They're just di walking diabetes. And F off. I put you all six Like, look at this. Night. You guys need to figure it out. You have a lot to prove. And trick. Yeah, my God, my game. These are children. Are you seriously putting this kind of pressure on children? You didn't have this process. No one would know your name. You are no man. Wow. That's nice to say to kids. If you didn't have what we have when we're giving, no one would know your name. You just said that to kids while Jojo Siwa sits there in the background and is like completely agreeing with you. You just told kids no one's going to know you unless it's for me. You told that to children. You're a grown ass, huge adult saying that while sitting in a, ch in a director's chair. You can get wrecked, asshole. The best credentials you have are the ones I'm giving you. Oh my gosh. 
Who watches this? And if, if someone said that to my kid, <laughs> first of all, I wouldn't put my kid in such a high pressure situation like this. Okay. But if I was sitting in a room like these moms are sitting in their room and this lady just said that to my kid, I'd be like, look, look, douchebag face. I'm taking my kid. We're out of here. You can kiss my ass. Okay. I, I'm like, we're leaving. <laughs> I don't care if my kid's upset. We're like, I, I will tell my child, no one ever will ever speak to you this way. No one does. You are not. You are no one. No one deserves to be spoken to this way. That is a piece of shit who said that to you. Okay, she's a gross, disgusting, disgustoid who couldn't make an industry herself, and so she projects it onto you when we're out of here. These moms are allowing their kids to be abused on camera for cash and probably not even a lot. It's stardom they're looking for. I, 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 this industry is so gross. I can't believe this exists. If you ever question me or my judgment, you're out. There's the door. I'd be like, okay, well, we got the door. See you later, douchebag. I would be out of that door so fast with my kid. I, on, oh my gosh, there's the door. Why don't you go? You need to go walk to the door. Walk a little more too. Get wrecked. Oh my gosh. And that was posted an hour ago. These women have amazing self-control because I can't say I'd be seated their way across the room if she was talking to me like that. Like I would, yeah. Oh my gosh, I would be out of there so fast. And that just proves to you that these moms have zero shame and like have zero protective capabilities. Obviously, they're exploiting them anyway. And like nobody talks to my kid that way. Okay, it's not happening. That's literally bullying children. And these parents are like, mm -hmm, I totally, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Mothers will do anything for the kids. This They're not for their kids. The mothers are doing this for the mothers. The mothers aren't doing this for the kids. They always say that though. I want them to follow their dreams and be a star because they want it. This is for the moms, everybody. It's always been, always will be pageants, dance competitions, everything. Always for the moms. Okay. Same thing with hockey in Canada. Our youth hockey program is absolutely bonkers. It is absolutely crazy. And it's not for the kids. It's because they think their kid's going to be the next NHL star. And you can't even play hockey unless you're rich, okay? So it's a very elitist sport, same with dance and all these like travel competitions, all but for rich people. And they will pour so much money in these kids. And the percentage of the kids who make it in this injury are like 1%, like of one in a trillion. So it's crazy that people put their kids through this for the, the, the minuscule chance that they could make it. It's been a while since I watched SDPR, but didn't say in the article the girls were overworked and then I remember Brooklyn feeling dizzy in an episode of Dehy for because of dehydration. I, You know what? I would pay somebody on this forum, if you're, if you're watching, this is the XOMG pop forum. I will pay somebody to watch all those and find me all the problematic videos, mash it up for me. I'll pay you. Pay for your time. The way she speaks to people alone, Jess is an evil, evil woman. So this is her mom. This is JoJo's mom. The beginning would have been fine if they stopped working hard because they were in the group. That isn't going to fly for any job. The saying she doesn't care about the tire was a little harsh, but not super uncommon for the industry. Well, that shouldn't be common for the industry. No one should be able to get away with it. As soon as it's called out, then that should be it. And then, okay, we're, don't go to this dance studio anymore. What's crazy to me is that Kinley had a name before Jess. Little Miss Full of Full Out. Kinley Mother Effing Full Out. She worked with Guy Gruyok here. Like these people, like... I think this is so unbelievable. Kinley had a name before the C was in, in oh, okay. Anyway, there's also on this group, I think there's a lot of fans and a lot of adult fans. And I would like to understand why adults are watching this. It's not for adults and adults are like, there was one post like, Oh my gosh, I found XOMG adult size jackets. I'm going to buy one before I go to the show. Okay. It's like, and you're, you're in a line with furries. Okay. That's weird. This is for children. Don't be an adult and like stand little children. Okay, I'm sorry. That's really weird and you're creepy. Uh, okay, for the first time, Angie and Leah Sanderson are speaking out, talking exclusively Rolling Stone about their almost two-year stint on XOMG Pop. They allege that Jesslyn was overtly cruel to the young charges, which we just saw evidence of, calling them names and in one instance, shaming them for having a disability. The contestant who was the target of the alleged verbal abuse did not return Rolling Stone's request for comment. These people are signing NDAs before they even start the first episode. Okay, and I honestly think that this should be the true thing. If a child, if you sign, okay, this pisses me off. If you sign on behalf of your child an NDA, that should not be legally binding. Your child cannot be legally bound to an NDA because they're minors. But these parents are signing these NDAs on, this, on behalf of the children so they have a small chance of fame. So these kids can't even speak out later if they are heard about it. They're not allowed to say anything legally. Unbelievable. Don't ever put your child into a situation where you have to sign an NDA. That's your first red flag to exit a ASAP.
Oh, we want you to sign this NDA. What for? Well, you know, eh. as soon as you're approached with an NDA, walk away. Okay? Holy crap. JoJo, meanwhile, could also be nasty and domineering, according to sources. A sharp contrast from her upbeat on-screen persona. Yeah, JoJo Siwa in be behind the camera is is a complete douchebag, and you all know it. She's nothing like she because nobody's like that. Nobody wears bows and like glitter paint all day long and is not a psychopath. Okay. They also allege that she played a role in helping to build a cutthroat environment long after the cameras were gone, playing favorites and pitting members against each other. That's the exact same thing Tiffany Smith did with the Pipers and the Piper Squad and Piper Raquel. That's what she same thing. They, they, they created relationships inside and they, they get, when a guy liked another girl, no, we didn't want him to like that girl. So he made him force her like this other girl for the camera. And it was like disgusting. In addition to the Sanderson's Rolling Stone spoke with multiple sources close to the production of dance pop revolution and the sea was, we also reviewed more than two dozen documents relating to XOMG pop and the sea was dance pop revolution, including contractual agreements, text messages, and emails. So this is Rolling Stone. This is a big deal. They're saying like, we checked it and it's legit. The sources allege that Siwa's and the producers dangled the carrot of startup in front of the young XOMG pop members, only to berate them and encourage them to cry on camera. <laughs> Again, if someone did this to my child, I would knock you out. You understand? I don't care. I'll go to jail for a little while. I would knock you out. You would never. Oh my gosh. And the fact that these parents have zero instinct for that, it makes me even more mad. The moms and kids would never come home and have candy, basket, and Nintendo Switch in their hotel room after being messed with all day. A source close to the production told Rolling Stone the highs were high and the lows were low. Representative for the production company behind Siwa's Dance Pop Revolution disputes this, saying the children were not given gifts, nor were they encouraged to cry. Well, we don't believe you. Because that's the way this world works. You want the drama, it adds to it, it makes you more money. So you're a damn liar. When Angie raised her concerns about XOMG Pop with the other mothers and the studio teacher, the Sanderson say they told Jesslyn and Leah was abruptly fired from the group. Again, this woman is exactly like Tiffany Smith of Piper Raquel fame. Exactly the same. Oh, you're going to talk about me? Your kid's fired. Why don't you just take the parent aside and say, let's let's talk about this. Nope. You make the kid suffer for the sins of the parents. That's disgusting. Like these people have no business being around children at all. And I hope there are major lawsuits coming. Because there is one for Tiffany Smith. She's being sued for $20 million. And whole oh, man, we're covering that. And I, I hope she ends up in jail. Lee and I were in a dark, dark place for months and months, and I don't think we were healthy enough to speak about it, Angie says. Now that we've had time to recover and heal from it, we're in a place where we're ready to share and tell people about everything. Because she's, and in, you know, I'm reading between the lines here because she wants her kids to still be famous. And so she's like, this is a great time to come out and speak out about it and let my kid garner the fame from this. In response to a list of detailed questions, the was denied the allegations via their counsel. Okay. Entertainment attorney Brian Freeman said the abuse came from Angie. Oh, did it? Because we just saw the video of Jojo Sio and her mom doing it. But it probably did come from the parents who had no power here. Probably. Okay. These allegations are 100% provably false. Well, I guess we'll see. The statement reads, voluminous and in, in, irrefutable evidence will tell you all you need to know. Now, do they ever present this evidence after they say these things? No, they don't. They just want you to hear it. And now all the kids, because it's like, this is kids drama, right? The people who are actually following this drama as adults are just, they, whatever. They, nobody believes you, lawyer. Nobody believes you. That disgruntled momager's own abusive behavior ca caused her daughter to be asked not to return to the group. His full statement. So again, he's like, they're throwing the kid under the bus. It's the mom's behavior. Okay, that doesn't matter. Then get them, boot the mom out. If you like the kid for the talent, which is weird anyway saying that, but if you like the kid for the talent, be like, look, you want your kid to be here? You're not welcome here. Send a representative, send the dad, send somebody else. You're not welcome here. We want your kid. Like, no, they fired the kid to get to piss off the mom. Freedom, again, and the mom, I'm not saying the mom is, is innocent here. She's probably not innocent. Absolutely. All these moms are the same way. They're all a bunch of douchebags. So I believe all of sides of this. That the mom is a douche and Georgia C was mom's a douche and the lawyer's a douche. Lawyers are douche. Friedman referred to Leah Sanderson's termination as Jessa as Jess Siwa protecting the staff and other girls in their families, which will continue to vociferously and unapologetically basically they're just saying this mom was toxic they did not respond to allegations unrelated to the sandersons or questioning regarding why many former members of the group had left right the lawyers aren't going to talk about the stuff that they're like well no i don't talk about that stuff through tree through treakly pop songs like party like a pop star candy hearts and disco believer xomg pop de developed a loyal fan base of tweens and young tweens garnering more than 15 million followers across social media platforms and 50 million views on tiktok in November 2023, they released a Christmas EP with Megan Trainer, giving the group more mainstream. Okay, so Megan Trainer is a great songwriter, and I think she's, you know, probably whatever. But the fact that Megan Trainer now is exploiting children, get wrecked. 
My daughter loves Megan Trainer, and now I'm gonna have, have a conversation with my daughter about like I need to tell you who Megan Trainer is because I, you know, I'm not gonna say don't listen to Megan Trainer because my daughter loves Megan Trainer, but I'm going to tell my daughter the truth about Megan Trainer now. Megan Trainer is a child exploiter. How does that make you feel? And this is what she does. And XOMG Pop is this group that does this. And uh, I don't want you, I, you know, I would prefer that you didn't stand these people. If you like their music, okay, it's one thing. But I need you to know that the people behind the music, they can be gross. And that, you know, where you give your social media currency, where you give your listening currency matters. I'm not going to force my daughter to stop listening to it, but I want to educate her on what's behind the scenes of this stuff. Like see what XOMG Pop has also benefited from, from enormous merchandising rollout. Like you're talking about Target, Walmart, betting, uh, Amazon, seven members, all whom were between the ages of eight and 14, Sanderson, Brooklyn, Pitts, Kinley, Cunningham, Bella, Lorena, Dallas, Sky, Kia, Barth, and Tamara, Adrizzen, and known as Tinny T, Tiny T, were posted as heirs to apparent JoJo Siwa's candy-colored multi-million dollar empire, touring malls, appearances on America's Got Talent, even marketing their very own crews. Yet the band has also attracted online scrutiny in part because of its habit of hemorrhaging members. Okay, these are children. There should be not hemorrhaging members. Okay, if you're going to run and do work with children, you've got to do it properly. You've got to protect their innocence. You've got to protect their livelihoods. You've got to protect their innocence. Like, you got to protect their, their, their hours, their time, their fun, their developmental years. And none of these people did. If you are hemorrhaging members in and out, these are kids. They're not adults. Four of the original winners of the competition... Barra Sixteen, Cunningham, Sanderson, and Lorena left under obscure circumstances over the past year and a half with little, if any, comment from the Siwas. Because they signed NDAs. No one will hear from them ever again. The mothers of the other girls who left declined comment Rolling Stone. Angie said she was the only one who didn't sign a non-disclosure agreement. Again, you signed a non-disclosure agreement and you're now you can't speak out about it? Now you have zero power? I would just break the damn non-disclosure agreement. Sue me cool because this stuff shouldn't be allowed to continue especially and i think if you broke the non-disclosure agreement a judge is gonna be like well that's the kids maybe just get your kid to tell their story because i don't think again it's legally binding for a child in response to rolling stone's request for comment each of the mothers of the current ex members each of the current members sent statements to rolling stone via representative for the c was so sent statement via the c was lawyer <laughs> attesting to their positive experiences with the group well we didn't see that coming so <laughs> the current members who are currently benefiting from being in the group, sent messages through the CWAS lawyer to say, we're doing great. We love it here. <laughs> Blink twice if you're okay. Blink twice if you need help. Okay? <laughs> They're like, ah! That's crazy. That And then people are just like, oh, okay, that sounds normal. That sounds right. Wow. The mother's requested not to be individually identified. Jess has taken care of the girls on her own. Jojo has played an older sister role in support of a mentor of the girls. We value time, energy, intention, and financial commitment that she has given us. There it is. That's all you need to know. We value the financial commitment. We value the money that we're getting for, for forcing our kids to be in this toxic, cancerous pop group. That's all you need to see right there. We value the money we made. Uneffing believable. You're gonna put your kid in a toxic, disgusting environment because you get and you're getting and you're gonna take money for it. You're going to hell. I'm sorry. If there's a hell, you're going there. Another wrote: Since we have joined, we've only had an amazing positive experience. I find it very hard to believe the Seawas could have done anything wrong. Except we just watched a video of her treating these kids like garbage. Holy! Another mother wrote: My daughter has been part of the group since day one, and I can attest to being healthy, positive environment. No, well, we just saw proof otherwise. It's not healthy. That's for sure. Another said she is saddened by the allegations, writing, I hope for our kids' sake the dreams of hard work won't be hurt by the story. I hope that they, they will. I hope that your, I hope this group gets shut down because of this and your kid gets forced to go live a normal childhood. I absolutely hope it's forced. Yep. The allegations against us he was highlighting growing concern within the entertainment industry regarding the lack of protections extended minors in Hollywood, particularly within the social media space, which is subject to very little oversight or regulation. Mm-hmm. Almost none. In light of such concerns, numerous states, including California, are considering passing legislation that will require adult guardians to set aside a percentage of minor social media revenue and put in this trust. Now, I think what they're saying is here, this group, these parents aren't required to set aside anything for their kids. This isn't normal Hollywood stuff. You think Jojo C was having like these kids, if they're not following, they're not following um, child labor laws. That's for sure. These kids are working 12, 15 hours a day. You're only allowed to work four hours a day as a child in this industry. And then the rest has to be like, you have to have a tutor, you have to prove this, that, and the other thing. And there's no way that they're doing that. And I wish someone whistleblow on that because if you're going to be on TV, social media included, you should have to follow the same rules as childhood actors. If you're making money off these kids and productions are making money off, money off these kids, re just because it's reality television should not have to, I don't understand how they got away with that. 
They're still acting. They're still being put to work. They're still being made money from. Through such legislation, though such legislation widely known as the Coogan Law, named after 1920 child actor Coogan, Jackie Coogan, exists for minors in the traditional entertainment industry, the law has not kept pace with the growth of social media at all. Like, they're 50, 70 years behind. For kids who are posting online content, there is nothing comparable to the kind of very specific protections against commercially exploited. They are similar to what afford... The actors doing the identical things to, in traditional media. Because XOMG Pop was formed as a result of a reality television show on a mainstream network, there are elements of the girls' experience that make it unambiguously a commercial enterprise. Absolutely. Subject to traditional regulations, says Howard, and it does seem that the C was attempted to adhere to such regu regulations as evidenced by the fact an on-set teacher was made available to the girls. Uh, don't listen to this, because Tiffany just said the same stuff about the, about the Piper Squad stuff. She said the exact same stuff. And a portion of the earnings was set aside in a Coogan Trust, according to the bank statements. But do you think these kids were relegated to only work four hours a day? Do you think they'd achieved what they've achieved by working four hours a day? Impossible. Impossible. But because much of the work, such brand deals or shooting content for social media did not fall into this category, the Sanderson's alleged the was failed to compensate Leah for such labor or provide her with the standard onset protections afforded the minor talent. So that's what they're always going to come back with. If these, if these people... St don't follow the same rules. They're going to come back with like, they weren't treating our kids like kid actors and they should have been. Angie says her and Leah's stories in the mon is Angie says her and Leah's stories is an admonition for parents of children working in Hollywood, not to get starstruck. Do your research. She says, don't assume you know someone because they're public persona to Jesslyn. See what she says. You're a mom. And the way that you hurt these kids is not okay. And also Angie, I'd like to tell you that you're a mom and you also explore your child just because it went South for you doesn't mean that you're still not a piece of garbage because you are you and Jessalyn are both equally pieces of garbage you think you're going to be able to handle my mom I thought the same thing when I was nine and it took where I am now so it may have worked Jojo says in the opening moments of the first episode standing next to her mom Jessalyn promises to make the group a phenomenon you're going to be in jail before this happens you're going to be sued into oblivion it's not going to be a phenomenon I promise you that it's a kids pop group okay most adults who listen to music aren't listening to kids pop Okay, even kids aren't listening to this garbage. It's usually garbage because it's always fully blown auto tune. These, none of these kids have actual real talent. And those who do have real talent, it's forced out of you to make bubblegum pop that is like squished out by auto tune and effects. It's not, you're not actually allowing a kid who has a good voice to shine. According to Sanderson and three sources close to production, the cast was under the impression that XOMG pop was intended to give Jesslyn a project while Jojo launched the next more mature phase of her career. It was like, let me give mommy, my mommy new little dolls to play with so I can stop wearing bows and have a life. That's that's a huge statement. So Jojo doesn't want to be the bow wearing, you know, Jesslyn superstar anymore. So she's like, here, mom, go exploit these children. The only way this mom feels like she's doing anything is by exploiting children. <laughs> if you hear that, okay? The only way she can do things and make it in an industry is to exploit those who shouldn't be exploited. Why don't you do this with adults if you have such stardom and fame? Why do you have to berate children on your show? Why don't you try this with adults? But there were tensions within the cast and between the Seawoods and some of the cast members almost immediately. I think. Like, look at Jesslyn. Some of this was two source. Some of this, two sources close to the production say, was due to the inherent premise of the show, which involved children being pitted against each other in a competitive setting. Two of the contestants were frequently compared to each other by Jesslyn because they both had blonde hair, prompting one of them to dye their hair mid-season. Two sources close to production alleged that in a deleted elimination sequence, the girls who were cut from the show would be asked by producers to look in the mirror, watching themselves become visibly upset during their exit interviews. So is there a camera behind the mirror? Oh my gosh. A representative for the production company denies they were asked to sit in front of a mirror part of the exit interview. Well, I don't, we don't believe you. Like Angie and Leah Sanderson. See, you notice anything about these moms? You know, just notice anything. According to one of the sources close to production, an, an adage among some of the production on set was, it's a, not a good day unless I make a kid cry. Angie Sanderson confirmed she had heard such a comment from a producer as well. Like, imagine saying this out loud. It's not a good day unless a kid cries because they want that drama on TV. And we, you know what? They can say, no, we didn't. But you know it's true. All you have to do is watch the production. If there are kids crying in the production, then it's true. Another source who spoke to Rolling Stone said they had not heard this specifically, but such a remark was consistent with the atmosphere on set. When asked whether any producers had made such a comment, a representative for the production company said, not to my knowledge, of course, adding such a remark has countered everything JoJo Siwa stands for. We just watched the video where JoJo Siwa sat there while her mom berated these little children. So we don't believe you. 
I hate that you're allowed to just say whatever. <laughs> well, it's a lie, and I'll say it out loud. Producers encourage drama and tension between castmates, according to those who spoke with Rolling Stone. Though manipulating reality to show contestants for sake of maximization drama is fairly standard reality television procedure, the stakes were heightened by the fact that these contestants in question were children, including one who was only eight years old. Oh my gosh. Again, if you put your eight-year-old in this, you are a piece of garbage. Angie alleges that the show was edited to make her look ruthless and self-aggrandizing. No, she probably was both of those things. And in the one scene in particular in which Leah performs a song with a ukulele to curry favor with the sea was, was in fact staged by producers and edited to make her look like Leah was taking advantage of a rival contestant's illness. Two sources close to production confirmed the moment was in fact staged by producers. The representative for the production company said the producers did encourage Leah to audition for the sea was at that moment, but that the show never intended to paint her in a bad light. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Oh my God. Like this whole article when they, it's just everybody lying. All the time. And in the in and in the foreground are these children who are exploited. It's crazy. All these parents and Jojo see when her mom and the moms are lying. And the production company's lying and the lawyers are lying. And these kids are literally victims in the middle. The environment was one of constant fear, the Sanderson say. You're kind of taught from the beginning you need to act grateful and thankful at all times. And thank Jojo and Jess for every little thing, Angie says. They would say, Look, we can make your kids a star. Look at the opportunities we're giving you. Like that's disgusting. Imagine forcing kids to be to be grateful and thankful at the same time berating them. And then you thank me for berating you on camera. You better thank me. So that's what they would use. This is a power struggle, right? This is, they're using their leverage as famous people that I can make you famous. And so I'm going to treat you like garbage. And if you push back any degree, I'm, I have the power to cancel this. I have the power to make you not famous. That is That should be illegal, everybody. Jesslyn was also allegedly verbally abusive during rehearsals, which we saw, everybody. And that's what they were willing to show us, by the way. That's the producers allowed that out. So what what do you think we didn't see? The Sandersons and two sources close to production alleged with Jesslyn braiding a contestant with hip hiptonia, a disorder that causes low muscle tone by mocking her for being able to move her arms and legs. She also allegedly made fun of her speech at one point mimicking her. Neither of the alleged scenes made it to air. <laughs> and in the contestants in question did not respond to requests for comment because they signed a non-disclosure agreement. Holy cow. So this literal mother was making fun of a child that had disease. Oh my gosh. Things got significantly worse once production for the show ended in summer of 2021. And the winners, including Leah, transitioned to being full-time musical act, according to multiple sources. The Sandersons allege, and another source close to the situation confirms, they largely had to pay out of pocket for food and transportation, often without being reimbursed, and were not paid for individual music video, photo, or social media. And again, these, people, these parents are signing their kids up. Like, it's basically slave labor. This is crazy. These kids are, they're also breaking all child labor laws. And maybe the way they're doing it is because they're actually not paying these people. They think it's volunteering. They're not, pay, they, they should be paying these kids thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars and not paying them anything. Because they have the power to be like, well, man, don't complain or I'll kick you out. That should be, uh, that should be fraud. That should be illegal. California child labor law dictates that minors are entitled to a minimum hourly wage for every hour they are on set. But according to Eugene Lee, an attorney who specializes in labor law in the state of California, child labor laws as they stand do not entitle children to compensation for, say, shooting social media content. And Lee says he is not aware of any case law pertaining to such compensation. That's crazy. All these people in California, they're making bank off these kids because there is no, they're not entitled to compensation because it's social media. Like that's the law being 20 years behind. The ambiguity surrounding the laws protecting minors, he said, combined with Leah's non-employee status, as evidenced by 1099 tax form provided to Rolling Stone, would make the case difficult yet worthwhile. In his estimation, I'd take that case. So they're saying, yeah, they took advantage of these kids and took advantage of this law and made millions. Also, according to Angie, a, co a copy of the recording contract provided to Rolling Stone, the girls were promised $10,000 upon recording their first album. That's not a lot of money for this supposed superstar or big band. That's not a lot of money, guys. That, that would be a lot of money in the 80s upon recording the kids. So yet the Sandersons only received a little more than 4,000 because Jess said she had only she had to pay for the Airbnb where they would stay a deposit for 4250 provided to Rolex. So she's like, so they get this thing. It's like this traditional record deal. We're going to give you this money, but you're going to owe it back to us plus interest. So whenever you like back in the day and maybe they still do this, but artists were given a stipend like a, a, an advance to come do a record. But that advance isn't money they're paying them. You owe that back to the record company with interest on your record sales. Like artists were taken advantage of so badly back in the day and still are. And like to the tune of like they, some artists didn't make as much as you thought. And the labels would take everything from them. 
Okay, this is exactly what happened though. Imagine saying, okay, you gotta come up for this thing, but imagine paying 4,200 for a, okay, like, these parents are so stupid too. Like, talk about bad financial decisions. Though the C was rented a house in San Fernando Valley in the 2020 that would become known as the XOMG Pop Content House, which was front, like, this is exactly Piper Raquel stuff which was furnished brightly colored walls and a claw grab machine. The kids did not sleep there, according to Sanderson's and a source close to the group. Angie alleges that after leaving the Airbnb, she and Leah would spend several months sleeping on blow up mattresses on the floor of Kinley's dance studio. That's a great life for a child. Such you're basically homeless. Cool. All for what? For the possibility that maybe you'll be famous and you probably won't. This was Angie says a dire financial situation for her family. So here's Angie. Here's what you do. You leave, you go back home, you do what you were doing because you were making it just fine. So leave. As she had shut down her daycare center in order to live with Leah in California, away from her family, by the way, so silly. Yet she lived in fear that if she said anything, she would endanger Leah's position in the group. And she did. Or they would be sued for breach of contract. Something she and two sources close to production of Dance Pop Revolution allege the mothers were threatened with online, with were threatened with, with on multiple occasions. So they were threatened with like, if you don't do all this stuff, like if you leave, we'll just sue you. So they were kind of stuck. And these parents are to blame because they're not hiring lawyers to explain to them what these in, is in these contracts. And these kids are stuck. So if they leave, they're sued. If they stay, they can be kicked out if they say something. They're always in limbo because they signed shitty contracts on behalf of their kids. Because fame. The fact that one member, Kaya, had already been abruptly fired in the fall of 2020 further solidified that no one standing within the group was guaranteed. Kira's mother declined to comment because Kira's mother signed a non-disclosure agreement. You dumbos. You have to understand the atmosphere, Sanderson says. You're not allowed to say anything. You can't question anything. You're living in fear that you're going to cost your child the opportunity that they'll get fired or that we're going to have to get a lawyer. You should have already had a lawyer, you idiot. And none of us had the money. So what are you doing? Why are you here? And don't don't get it wrong. The mom's to blame. But also Joe Jocino and her mom know this and take advantage of that. Oh, man, Hollywood is disgusting. The mothers were so short on funds, Angie alleged, that at one point, she and Bella's mother started working directly for Jesslyn herself, organizing Joe's closet and scrubbing toilets in her home for $20 an hour. According to PayPal receipts and a schedule provided by Rolling Stone, Bella's mother did not respond to requests for comment because she signed an NDA. So these moms were so hard for cash that Jesslyn just said, oh, you know what? Instead of paying you what you're owed, come clean my toilets. Jesslyn is disgusting. Additionally, rehearsals would last for hours with little time available for school. That's what they're going to be sued for in the end. The Sanderson's and a source close to the group allege, according to a calendar shared with Rolling Stone, shoots for music videos like Disco Believer could extend up to nine hours with rehearsal call times sometimes being sent to the girls well after midnight the night before. We would end up working a nine hour day with no school, says Leah. Every single day put us so far behind. They had had proof in the calendars. Wow. So this is just full on child exploitation. These kids have to get to school. They have to meet a certain thing. And they're like, nope, too bad. We have rehearsals. Wow, this is a crazy article. As the months stretch on, Leah would only sporadically do schoolwork. She alleges logging 6.6 hours of class time for the entire calendar month of December. According to the remote coursework website, Excellus, a teacher on set who spoke with Rolling Stone said that Excellus records are not representative of the entire of the XOMG pop member schoolwork. Okay, the lawyer told you to say that. You're such a liar. The legal requirement in the state of California is for minors to attend school for at least three hours for every full day they're on set. Multiple sources close to the group told Rolling Stone, however, the schooling for the girls was inconsistent and it was not uncommon for the girls to fall behind their academic work. So that's an additional pressure on top of the work that they're doing, everybody. The teacher on set denied this, saying that during their tenure, none of the parents had ever complained to them about the girls being overworked or falling behind in school. I wonder why they didn't complain. (laughs) Interesting that, because if they complained, they'd be fired. That's so stupid. My overall experience working for the team, CEO has been one of professionals with a child center focus. No, it hasn't been. And because she's getting paid. That's why she said that's a damn liar. And you should be ashamed of yourself. A person who's supposed to be teaching children and you know it's wrong what you're saying and you know you're lying and you're just, you're sitting here going to bat for child exploiters. Hell, hell to the lot of them. While working for team CEO, I have only observed the enforcement of CA's labor laws. Yeah, no one believes you. After the show ended, Sanderson's and other sources close to the group alleged the competitive aspect did not end. XOMG pop members were required to put in endless hours making Snapchat, TikToks, and YouTube content. There was no direct compensation for that labor. And XOMG made all the money off that. That's crazy. 
But according to Sanderson's and two sources close to the situation, the girls were promised a $500 prize if their TikTok got the most views in a given week. 500 bucks? At first, Leah says they enjoyed making the videos, but quickly took on a more cutthroat bent. Everyone was still pitted against each other the entire time. During rehearsals, the group, Leah alleges Jojo would often encourage the girls to compare themselves to each other, breeding an atmosphere of constant contention and presenting a stark contrast to her sunny public persona. We're supposed to be a group and supposed to be unified, says Leah. It was like the show all over again. During one performance in the Mall of America in Minnesota, she alleges Jojo was shouting at them in their headsets, screaming, you're sucking. Bring it up. The energy is low. You look sloppy. This isn't good enough. We had thousands of people watching this, and then we had someone in our tears ears screaming us, telling us we suck. Jojo, kiss everybody's ass. Wow. Angie's decision to keep Lee in the group was different, difficult for many to understand. To this day, Angie had trouble explaining it. I'm sure people would say, why were they doing all this? Why as a mom would you let her do that? She says, for one, my child was determined not to lose her part, not to miss out on anything, and she didn't want to get kicked out of the group, and all the promises at the time were being promised. There was a performance in Australia on the horizon, a multi-million dollar toy deal, a Christmas movie, so much time had been put into the group, so much had been promised, and still has regrets about the fact that she did not pull Lee out earlier. Well, we drank the Kool-Aid. I can give her that. I understand that. Leah did not leave XOMG pop group of her own accord. On May 3rd, 2023, when the girls were filming a YouTube video making slime at the group's content house, Angie fed up with the alleged arduous hours and the erratic school schedule had a verbal confrontation with the mothers, as well as the girls' teacher. When Jesslyn caught wind of it, she texted her demanding she apologize and the other mothers for her behavior. Angie said, I'm sick and tired of it. Jesslyn says in the text, which were reviewed by Rolling Stone, I work really hard. I've gone over and above and beyond for you and, my, your, and your kid. There's food at the house. They're not overworked. If you're going to work for me, you cannot act like an asshole. Okay. Oh my gosh. Texts provided by both Sanderson's and the Seawoods Council show that Angie repeatedly pleaded for Leah to stay in the group. Please, Jess, my daughter will hate me forever, she wrote in the text message. She even offered, oh my God, listen to this. She even offered to assign on-set guardianship, a requirement for minors in California to her older daughter or to one of her other mothers so Leah could stay in the group. A gesture of the Seawoods via their council alleged completely discredit her in these ridiculous allegations, but which Sanderson characterizes as a last-ditch effort to keep her Leah in the, the, the thing. When Sanderson's, okay, so she got kicked out, basically, right? She left on May 9th. Leah was devastated. I have given everything I had and had no more friends at home. I had left school, she says. I left it all to go be in this group just for her to take it away from me like that. I was literally, it was literally the end of the world. They left for Texas on May 9th. When the Sanderson's noticed that Leah's image was still being used in merchandise for XOMG Pop, including branded hairbrushes and costumes, they sent a letter on December 6th to the Siwas, provided to Rolling Stone accusing, accusing them of using her image without authorization. A screen grab of Instagram story from the XOMG Pop group account provided Rolling Stone screenshot shot of July 17th appears to show display for the group branded merch at Walmart prominently features Leah. Well, that's you signed the contract, dumbass. A merchandising contract provided to Rolling Stone signed in June 2021 entitles the seven members of XOMG Pop to 20% of merchandising revenue. So 80% goes to Jojo and her mom and these kids have to split 20% amongst like seven of them. Or about 2.8% per member. Though the entertainment in attorney who spoke with Rolling Stone said such percentage is shockingly low, even for new artists. The Sanderson alleged they have not seen any revenue from merchandising, nor have they been compensated for brand deals, photo, and music video shoots. Again, she's suing. That's what's going on here. Since Leah was terminated, two other members of the group have left. Kinley Cunningham and Bella Lorena. Kinley's mother declined to comment. NDA. Only three of the group's members remain. Brooklyn Pitts, blah, blah, blah. And that's the parents are like, it's such a good place for my kids. Those who spoke with Rolling Stone characterized XOMG Pop as an unsuccessful attempt on Jesslyn Siwa's part to recreate JoJo with a new crop of younger talent. The world did not pick this group. One source close to the production told me they've pulled every lever. They got Megan Trainer. It's been almost two years. They're not going to make it. Can you really force feed it to the world? Of the Siwas, the source says, they really messed up some people's lives in ways I don't think they even realize. Those close to the Siwas, such as the set teacher who spoke with Rolling Stone, dispute this. All the intentions are good and no, they're not. There's no such thing as good intentions with exploitation of children. Just pay them what they're owed. It's about money. Let's be real. After months of depression as well as struggles with her health, Leah says she is on the path towards developing a new perspective about her time in the group. She loves that she got to meet and work with some of her favorite celebrities, including Trainer. She's glad to have made some lifelong friends along. Again, Trainer needs to come out against this and be okay. I don't. I didn't know that was going on. I don't want my name associated with this. Stop associating yourself with children's groups. But she still harbors resentment towards the Siwas, with whom she spent almost two years of her life, and with whom she says she has not spoken to since her mother received the May 6th text. It's, it's like, they use you, she says, and then they throw you in the trash. And then this is the statement, I'm not going to read, I'm not, not going to read their lawyer statement, because it's a lie. <laughs> anyway, so there you go, everybody, that's the XOMG group, what's going on with Jojo Siwa, who was exploited as a child, who was a victim as a child, and is now a full-grown adult, and is now victimizing other children. She is a full-blown child exploiter, and it's all about money.
Okay, this is exactly like the Piper Rock L. Tiffany situation, and it's just repeating itself. And JoJo Siwa is lining herself up to be this disgusting piece of trash. And the way that the only way this is going to work for them is if they exploit children. JoJo Siwa, I know that you're famous on the internet, and you were famous when you were young. Nobody likes you. Okay, you're, you, the bows were overdone so much, and you're still trying to want to be this person. It's over. Okay, I know you can still make some money, but you're a loser. Okay? You're a loser because you exploit children. You had the opportunity to speak out against that in which you know is wrong and you, instead you capitalized on it. So you're a big giant loser and your mom's a douchebag too. And all these other moms who do this too, all of you are douche. There's no good people in the story. Okay, All gross. Disgusting. So stop allowing your children to partake in stuff like this. Even like... It, especially the social media, kids on social media, because we know that they're not compensated. We know that they're treated badly and it is disgusting. These kids are just vessels for their parents to create fame and say, oh, I have a famous kid. And almost none of them actually become famous after childhood superstardom, okay? Almost all of them don't, okay? It's a disgusting industry. Hollywood is, is toxic and dangerous cesspool for children. Do not put your kids anywhere near it, okay? Protect your kids. Everybody, take a deep breath. <sighs> Please don't let your kids watch this stuff. Please. I know you think it's innocent, but it's not. Think about the behind the scenes stuff that goes on with all these kids. It's so dangerous. And I have ongoing conversations with my daughter about all this stuff, and she's highly aware of it. Okay? At least make your kids aware of it. Okay? I'm not saying force them to not watch it or whatever the case may be, but help them understand it and then let them make a choice. Because that's really important. You guys, thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of this amazing conversation. I hope that you're having an amazing day. Someone has a crush on you. You're incredible. You are valuable. Don't you forget it. And I will see you when I see you.